app. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters. When you hit that, you're going to see it on the left-hand side, the second one down. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Basil has approximately 12 to 14 archives out there. You're going to understand how to ride that Chapman wave each and every day in this wild market. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm very good. Thank you. Good. Spring is here, yeah. Basil. Oh, thank goodness. I love it. Yes. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah. So uh, this is interesting. You know, we're talking about spring, but um, I think it's the fall for the Dow because uh, it's been struggling for, for a little while. So, you know, in my, in my uh, methodology, I'm always looking from a low bar that starts off a buy signal that can go to a buy mode, and that implies there should be at least four higher peaks. It's at that fourth highest peak, peak D, that other things can happen. Sometimes we can recycle immediately to another four peaks higher, but that's also where you can have the sharpest pullback. So in the uh, Dow Daily, we've been uh, notating these um, peaks and as we were getting to leg D on the 20th of May, um, I said to subscribers, we're going to just for one more day, we're going to keep our, our trading. We actually have long positions from way back. We still got those, but we had a trading three times long, small position in the Dow. <clears throat> but on that day, I said, we're going to buy the, we're going to get the inverse for a short side for the Dow, because from everything I'm looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm anticipating that there's going to be some kind of a pullback. So we started that on the uh, 20th of May. The very next day, <clears throat> we took profits in our uh, UDOW three times long, <clears throat> and we've been short since. And one of the reasons is there, uh, there were a number of indicators. Uh, also, I like to use the inverse. That's the DOG as when it's making a trough. If it coincides with what's potentially a, <clears throat> a peak in the, in the daily chart of the Dow, the diamonds, that's usually a place over the years that we've at least started a short position. So now what we're looking at is we've got this arch formation. And I drew in these, these parallel lines that you see here in the Dow technique that I use where I try to find a low bar. Sometimes it's the exact uh, plumb line at the bottom. The number of bars on the left can equal the number of bars on the right. But sometimes I have to find a different place. And I did that. And I use another technique that I call the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge target it's a dashed green on the way up target line and in this particular instance you can see it was went up 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 and it, it took us right almost to the bar uh, of the high and then it turned around so now we've got the same thing i did the arch formation i used a particular plumb line and today we broke that support and that just says that we've got a sell mode in place in the daily chart what's really fascinating and this is the bifurcated market we've got. I mean, I don't ever recall seeing the incredible divergence between, say, the semiconductors at all-time highs and the Dow, the way it's been weak lately. But, but uh, we'll have to just deal with that, and I'll talk about it in a minute. What I am looking at <clears throat> is this left side vertical line right here of the week of the uh, 22nd of March. You can see the MACD was still good. The stochastic was good. It was pulling back, but it was good. On balance volume is starting to pull back. But <clears throat> on this rally here to the high, that's the week of the 24th of May, you can see the MACD already turned down sharply and so did the stochastic. But that nine period moving average for the weekly chart is still very strong. So I'm going one step at a time. So we've got our uh, sell mode in the Dow. But I, I believe from everything I'm looking at, um, it's going to be very unusual to the, for the Dow to pull back like this, even though it's the Dow 30. It's really a very broad mix of the economy in the Dow, and that to me is very important, not the number of stocks, but the type of stocks. So in this particular instance, what I am anticipating is that there will be a little bit more of a pullback, and if the Dow starts to drag the others down, and they, it's just starting to do that a little bit now, 
that's going to be important. But I've used Microsoft as kind of a benchmark for us. We've been long Microsoft since uh, I think it was October the 30th. I uh, used it as a benchmark saying uh, where Microsoft goes, we're probably going to get the Dow going, the S&P, the QQQ, and even the AI stocks. So I've used it kind of a, as a, a broad benchmark. And it's starting to stall a little bit, but it hasn't have, it hasn't given any signals. And, you know, we were looking at the stocks like NVIDIA and all that, and I spoke about the round, exact round number highs that they made all-time highs, some of those stocks, and exact round number lows. And then they had big rallies off those lows. So I don't, I don't see any clues right now in Microsoft to say <clears throat> that it's weakening. It could go sideways for a little bit, but that's going to be very important because if Microsoft trading at 429, we, we're along from a 438, a 338 level. If this starts to pull back and it starts to go under 418 in the next two weeks, <clears throat> that'll start to impact the nine period moving average. So <clears throat> that's the one thing. The other is, I've said that I like to see the financials moving together with the general market. I also like to see the IYT, which is the transports, and they're doing quite badly right now. But uh, the XLF made a new um, all time high just recently right here, and that was, I think, also on the 20th. I'll give you the date right now. Uh, that was on the, there, there it is. So that was on the 20th of May. Yep, same as the day at 42.46. <clears throat> it's been pulling back, but it's still acting really well. So w when I'm looking at this market, <clears throat> I, I don't know whether it's just the fear of the higher race, just exactly how that's going to unfold, but I'm, I'm, I've become, we've raised cash because I, I don't like the fact that just the Dow has pulled back, but I, the fact that the Dow includes so many diverse areas, that makes me a little concerned. But you can see, here's um, SMHs, the, the semiconductors. This is a leg D, we're always looking for those leg Ds. This is the second leg D we've had after that instant restart. So I'm watching this very closely because to really get the market to pull back sh strongly, I think you do have to see the same. They usually lead us up and they lead us down. And right now, as I say, we've got this big divergence between even the S&P is pulling back, even the IWM, which is holding quite well, has started to pull back. So this is, I, I call it a work in progress. It's not like a, I mean, when the, when the Dow pulls back like this 300 points uh, every couple of days, you'd expect it to impact the market. And in some sense, the market's being said, no, 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 we're a broader thing than just the Dow. So I'm not ignoring it. I'm just saying this to me is a heads up just to say, I think that we, we've we got, a, a, um, a, it's a consolidation that's already begun to unfold and how each step comes is gonna be, because there's a rotational correction, even on the way down, on the way up, it was the same and on the way down. So it's gonna be very important to see if the Dow, let's, I'll give you a number right now. If the Dow takes out, <clears throat> This gap, the under 38,500, I think it will impact most of the other parts of the market. So I'm uh, very cautious right at the moment. All right, listen, folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN under newsletters on the left on the left hand side. You're gonna see at the second one down the opening call. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to show tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back.